Good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here. I'm Jano Lieber, Acting Chair and CEO of the MTA, and I'm joined by my colleague, my partner, Metro North President Kathy Rinaldi, Westchester County Exec George Latimer, a great partner in so many things that we do, Belmont Mayor, uh, thank you for being here, and um, the, no, Harrison Mayor Belmont, I shouldn't say. <laughs> You know, I got, I got projects going on at Belmont and Elmont, so <laughs> forgive me. Uh, Harrison Mayor Belmont, thank you for being here. And Mike Fleischer, uh, one of our MTA board members, who's a great supporter of everything we're doing, uh, including a lot of projects north of the city, and from Avalon Bay, uh, who is doing this interesting, successful mixed-use development, John Vogel, thank you for being here. We're here today at the Harrison Station to celebrate the opening of a new 598 space garage. What's important about this, in addition to the convenience uh, it will provide for our users in this area, is that it is part of Metro North's first transit oriented development. The project's been in the works for 10 years, and there was a lot of planning before that, a lot of it done in tandem with, uh, with uh, Harrison and local and county partners. This is a model of what we talk about, what we mean when we talk about transit-oriented development. We're getting more parking spaces, but we're also getting a mixed-use development that's going to have multifamily living. And that means that there are places for young people who are starting out their careers who want to move to this community but maybe live in an apartment before they uh, start a family. That means that seniors who have, have made their lives in this community when they want to get out of their homes can stay in an area where they have roots. And it also means that you can have projects and a lifestyle that doesn't require always two or three cars because you're right on top of a train station you can live uh, a more transit-oriented life getting uh, where you need to go using mass transit even in the suburbs. And equally important, it contributes to the dynamism and the appeal of the, the, the downtown of Harrison. It, it makes it more lively. That This model of live-work development and is something that I spent 14 years at at the World Trade Center. We turned lower Manhattan after 9-11 from a, an all uh, uh, skyscraper office community to a place where there are a lot of people living. So we, it became a live-work play community. And that's the model that all kinds of communities, big or small, are looking to. And the MTA is passionate about supporting it. We want to get people out of their cars, it's no secret. But we also realize that not every community is entirely car free like many parts of the city. And this garage provides a middle ground. Residents can drive here and take the train to the city, to Connecticut or the Hudson Valley for work, for education, for leisure travel. And when they get on board, and this is the mission of today on the verge of our, our New York revival, from the pandemic, they're going to see how the MTA is undertaking unprecedented efforts to deliver top-notch service. So when our Westchester and Putnam and Connecticut and Dutchess and Rockland and Orange Riders get on, we want them to have a fantastic experience with service, which is increasing right now on the, on the verge of the return to work milestone of Labor Day. We're increasing service, we're getting smarter schedules, and we're exploring innovative fare structures to help make sure that we can win back our customers. We want our customers back, and we're determined to make it appealing for them to do so. Before I finish, I, 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 I want to under, underscore how important it is that this idea of transit-oriented development is not just a fantasy anymore of, of government and policy thinkers, futurists, that we're doing it, that we're taking, and it's true on Long Island as well, we're taking 
MTA parking lots, and we're finding ways to, at the same time, we're growing the number of parking spaces to make it attractive for people to come easy to park and use mass transit, and we're also doing development that will uh, make a, a, create this model of dynamic downtowns and exciting, uh, exciting places for all different kinds of people to live. So thank you. And with that, let me turn it over to Kathy Rinaldi. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, Jano. Um, I'm Catherine Rinaldi. I'm the president of Metro North. Improving the customer experience is always at the forefront of our minds, and this project is emblematic of Metro North's Way Ahead plan and Metro North's commitment to transforming the areas around our stations into vibrant destinations. This new garage is fully ADA accessible with two elevators. As Jano said, there are 598 spaces, 475 of which are reserved for Metro North customers. This represents an 80% increase in available parking for our customers. And we were able to accomplish this major benefit at no capital cost to the MTA. I want to thank our incredible project team for getting this project done. There have been many great people working on this project over the years, but I'd especially like to call out Greg Sylvester, Nick Roberts, and Robin Hollander for their hard work. And also, this is going to sound a bit like the Academy Awards, but there are literally hundreds of people at Metro North and MTA who've worked on this project over the year. Um, I'm not going to call out 100 names, but I am going to call out a few more. Um, some of them used to be Metro North people who are at CND. Some of them were always at MTA, but they're part of our larger family, and they deserve a lot of recognition for the hard work that they've done over the course of this project. So without further ado, from Power, Lee Martin, Derek Singh, Anthony Anderson, Joe Balzano, and Tim Mulligan. From Structures, Anna Maria Bonilla, Jian Wang, and Yang. From Communications and Signals, Lenny Borsalino, who tragically died a few weeks ago. From Engineering, Glenn Hayden, Mike Loney, and Mario Saliga. From the Metro North INC Group, Rich Ram Keeson, Glenn Back Blackman, excuse me, and Larry Duresh. From Planning, Mike Schiffer, Emily Provancha, Kim Smith, Wendy Johnston, Baha Kajakian, and Holly Half. From Government Relations, Mark Mannix. From Stations, Phil Patillo, Matt, B uh, Matt DePasquale, and Nick Rush. From Transportation's Operations Services on the New Haven Line, Mark Car Mike Carfee, excuse me. From Legal, Susan Sarch, Andrea Asher, and Jonathan Allweiss. From CND and TOD, um, Virginia Borowski, Jeff Reed, Frederica Cuenca, Linda Corcoran, and Joe Chan. And from MTA Real Estate, Jeff Rosen. A lot of these people have actually retired over the course of this project, but I would like to ask for a round of applause for all the people who worked on this project. If it weren't for you, we would not be here today. We need to keep supporting these kinds of projects to strengthen the links between our communities and public transportation. As Jano said, the MTA drives the regional economy, and without a robust transportation network, New York and the entire region will not be able to rebound from this pandemic. For those of you who've been riding with us throughout the pandemic, or those of you who've already come back to Metro North recently, thank you so much. We are so happy to have you back with us. For those of you who are planning to return this fall, I know you're going to like what you see. We've made a lot of improvements over the past 17 months. Stations and trains are cleaner than ever before thanks to our comprehensive cleaning regimen. The real-time excuse me, the real -time capacity tracking feature on our MNR app was recently made available to the M8 fleet, which serves, there it is right there, which serves the New Haven line. And a project to renew the catenary system within the state of Connecticut was finally completed, which will bring a, a more reliable ride for our New Haven line customers and reduce the number of delays. Most important of all, as Jano has already mentioned, we're preparing to increase weekday service to 82% of pre-pandemic levels this Sunday, just in time for Labor Day. On weekends, we're getting ready to bring our customers to all of the fantastic fall destinations in our area by restoring our service to 100% of pre-pandemic levels. And we can't wait for our customers to see all this progress for themselves. And with that, I'd like to introduce the mayor of Harrison, Mayor Belmont. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's really impressive. The, the, the team that put this together have the trains simultaneously. Well, the big bosses here, that, that was great. God bless. Good morning, and, and those of you who don't live in Harrison, welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a great community here, and this is going to enhance it tremendously. This started 30 years ago. I was just a, a, a mere boy in high school, I guess, 30 years ago. 
And um, that's when the, the idea initially came, 30, 30 plus years ago. I was talking to uh, Greg about it earlier and, and Mark, and uh, they realized also that it's been 30 years. So the pyramids have nothing over the town village of Harrison. You know, it, it, it took a while, but it's, we got it done. Uh, 10 years ago, I remember uh, I took office in January 10 years ago, and the first thing I did that week was we had the appointment to go down to Manhattan and, and talk to the powers to be to get this, this ball rolling. And it's, it's rolling. It took a while, but uh, God bless the, the MTA and Avalon to get this done. It was, um, it was a work in, in progress constantly, but it was, a, it was a joy to work with each and every one of you. And I, I appreciate that. And this will be here for many, many years and enhance, as I said, enhance the downtown area. Ten years seems like a long time, but in, in, the, in the realm of things, it, it, it went by very quickly. So again, I thank you all. God bless the MTA and Avalon, and, and, and thank you so much for choosing Harrison. All right, just let's all listen to Mayor Belmont and say God bless the MTA. But then I have to, <laughs> I get the honor of introducing our friend and always a great partner, County Executive of Westchester, George Latimer. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here today. I know that there are 12 counties in the MTA service region, but it seems as if Westchester is the only one that matters because I've seen these folks here now a couple of times over the last few weeks. We were in Mount Vernon two weeks ago in the town that I was born in and grew up in. And now we come to my mother's hometown. She grew up not far from here in Franklin and Oak uh, to see this tremendous improvement here in, in the uh, town village of Harrison. I'm particularly gratified that, that this uh, announcement is happening while Mayor Ron Belmont is still mayor. He put so much time and effort into this. He's going to complete his public service as mayor at the end of the year. Ron, it's fitting that you be here to enjoy this moment. Um, <clears throat> there is a little bit of rivalry between Harrison and the next door community, which is what I happen to live in. And for those who know Harrison, if your mother is from Harrison and you meet a girl from Rye and you get married, you have stepped into the middle of the Harrison-Rye football game in a very difficult way. And in fact, oftentimes, the time I'd hear the word Harrison was when I commuted into the city during my corporate days. And for those of you who fall into this category and you fall asleep on the train ride out, you're programmed to hear the station before the one you have to get off on. So when I heard Harrison, that's wake up now, George, because you've got to get off for the next stop. But What's really impressive about what's happened here, credit Avalon, credit the MTA. I've passed by this portion of Halstead Avenue every day for the last 30 years of my life for one reason or another. I banked at the Wells Fargo. I've been in the little um, place of respite across the street for a beer or two, uh, the floral shop right up ahead here. I, as an individual, I could never foresee that this strip of land could turn into this. And this is an example of what happens when you have vision. And not the kind of vision where people dream dreams that seem fantastic, but people who understand construction, who understand the marketplace of housing, who understand what it will take to build a parking garage, and it's not cheap to build a parking garage, but they could foresee how the financing could come in, land acquisition, which part of the MTA world, but not automatic, the zoning and the planning, the pressures of the neighborhood, all of the pressures that come to Village Hall when you do a project like this, and yet that perseverance, it's not easy. It happened. It actually happened. That's what today is about, and I'm impressed by that, and if there's anything that I take out of this is that things that seem impossible can happen. It does take people a vision. It does take people with professional skill, and, and Kathy Rinaldi, who's a ter terrific neighbor as well as head of uh, Metro North, outlined so many of these people. I know Mark Mannix very well because as a government relations person, he's always on the front lines with us, and we appreciate that. I always like to remember the service of his dad who preceded me in the New York State Assembly as an elected official. <clears throat> but it took people like that to make this vision come true, and it tells us that there are more accomplishments we can have. If we can work across the aisle, if we can work with the independent agencies that have their own authority but yet do care about the communities that we work in, we can have more of these successes in the future. Thank you. Hi, I'm John Vogel from 
Avalon Bay communities. Uh, first, I want to reiterate the congratulations both to uh, the MTA uh, and uh, to the town of Harrison, Mayor Belmont, uh, Kathy and Jano, also uh, County Executive Latimer. Congratulations on achieving this milestone. Uh, conceived a long time ago, over a decade, uh, this is an amazing project that only happens through uh, their long-term vision and their leadership. I'd like to congratulate Avalon Bay, the team here, uh, who has persevered through uh, a very challenging project to get to the, this day. Uh, our design professionals and vendors, but especially our associates, including Chris Reynolds from, uh, from development, and our construction team led by Glenn Moran and Greg Grabars, uh, Jeff Perlman, Bob Akampora, Alan Rizzo, Clarence Ellington, and Bill Jacobson. Uh, their hard work, patience, and, pers and persistence was required to manage the design and construction that we see here today. This has been a challenging project to manage and to do so ac successfully across a multi-year pandemic is truly astonishing. Avalon Bay has built uh, many buildings near Metro North stations in Westchester County for over 20 years. We've built them in six different municipalities, including Yonkers, New Rochelle, White Plains, Mamaroneck, Bronxville, and now Harrison. With this investment, we have built over 2,400 apartments within walking distance of train stations served by Metro North. And I'm proud to say this is Avalon Bay's best execution yet in terms of its mix of uses, including doubling or 80% increase in the commuter parking, as stated before, providing new housing opportunities, and including important open space, retail, and other uses. For the first floor of these buildings, we are working with a range of users to provide a variety of community-serving spaces dedicated to shopping, neighborhood services, and remote work. So while this is Avalon Bay's sixth investment near Metro North and Westchester, it's by far our most integrated and our most thoughtful. To complete projects like this requires continued public sector support, but together we can invest in transit-oriented development that will revitalize downtowns, provide new commercial space, develop new mixed-income housing, and reduce our reliance on cars to the benefit of the environment and our communities. Thank you. So, uh, are we going to do any Q&A, Amanda? Let's do a ribbon cutting. All right, we love that.